Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time, Part 33. In this episode I'm working on the Stuart No. 7A steam engine, which has one or two issues. This is what it looked like after I finished the job, and I'm going to show parts of this job leading up to this. The main problem was getting the position of the bracket that holds the drop arm for the reversing gear in the right place. In this episode I also show reaming of the parts for a 4mm shaft and shaping the reversing lever that are fabricated using pieces of brass. On with the show. Generally speaking, on most of the Stuart model steam engines I've worked on, the steam inlet is either in the centre of the steam chest on some of them, but normally it's on the left hand side as you look at the steam chest. But this engine has the steam inlet on the right hand side and I think this is going to cause a problem. And during this job I'm going to show a good way of getting out of this problem. I thought at first that the position of the bracket could be okay if it was bolted to the steam chest just below the steam inlet. But the more I look at this job the more I think it's going to be a problem. I think the bracket is going to be too low. I'm drilling two holes in the steam chest at the moment. These two holes have been drilled in position so that if the bracket is too low I have the facility to be able to move it up to the next hole. The hole that was already drilled and threaded in the steam chest which holds the bottom part of the steam inlet flange. If you're not quite understanding this logic please keep watching and you'll see what happens. Drilling holes like this which are very small into the side of a steam chest is a very nerve wracking job. But in reality, the more nervous that you become, the more likely you are to make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. I could have done, because sometimes I make mistakes to illustrate how easy it is for a beginner to make mistakes, and more importantly, how to put the mistakes right. Thankfully, I didn't have to break off a 7BA tap, just to illustrate how you must not do this, and in this clip, you can see that the bolts fit perfectly in the holes. It's a good idea when threading small holes to actually use the three types of taps. The first one is called a taper tap and it goes into the hole and gradually makes the thread. And the second tap is normally referred to as a second because it's not quite as tapered as the first one. And the last one is parallel all the way down and this is called a plug tap. A plug tap allows you to thread right to the bottom of the hole. Please be aware that most taps break easily, but 7BA and 8BA and smaller than that break very easily. The bolts that are normally by are always too long, because you can reduce the length but you can't extend it. So both of those top bolts are just cut down versions of the bottom bolt. I just ground them down on the belt sander and then rounded the edge. Time now to make the short piece of shaft that goes through the bracket and the drop arm and the reversing lever. I bought this piece of stainless steel from Blackgates Engineering and it was supposed to be 5 30 seconds of an inch but they're not anymore, they're 4mm. And 4mm is ever so slightly larger than 5 30 seconds of an inch. The 4mm shaft would not fit in the holes at all. A very quick and simple solution, just go through the holes with a 4mm diameter reamer. This hardly removed any material but now the pin fits perfectly through all of the parts. And to finish this sequence, in this clip, I'm pushing the reamer through the reversing lever. And now everything fits together really well. And now it's time to look at the geometry of the reversing gear. Is it going to work? Uh, no. The problem is that the bracket that holds the drop arm is too low. And when I look on the drawing, it's obviously too low. And this is the only place I could fit the bracket because, as I mentioned earlier, the steam inlet flange is in the wrong place, at the wrong side. I could have mounted the bracket at the other side, but I've never seen an engine with the bracket mounted at that side. It's shown on the drawing with the bracket at the right hand side. But never fear, I have a solution and it will be quite a good one. When machining stainless steel, it's a good idea, where possible, to use a carbide tip tool. This, however, the parting tool, is just a plain old high-speed steel one. When machining or drilling stainless steel, it can be a big problem. You have to keep the tool going, keep it cutting. Because if you don't and the tool rubs the work, the stainless steel surface immediately work hardens and then you cannot cut it. It just blunts the tool or destroys the tip of a twist drill. This clip shows me marking out the shape of the reversing lever. Well, the approximate shape anyway. 
Now it's time to bolt the piece of stainless steel that you've just seen me make to the reversing lever blank as shown. I've used a 7BA stud for this. The next part of the process is critical and if I do it wrong the part will be no good and I'll have to throw it away and start again. And I don't want to do that so I'm going to be really careful not to take too much metal off the reversing lever blank. Particularly from around the piece of stainless steel. On screen at the moment is work in progress. I'm removing the brass very very carefully up to the scribed line on the reversing lever blank. You will notice that I keep removing the blank and that's to dip it in a pot of water to cool it down. I have to do this because it's getting too hot to handle. At this point I like to say I don't think I've ever had a girlfriend like that. And time's running out at my age to get one. I really must keep my mind on the job because if I make a mistake here then I have to just start again and that would be a real pain. But I'm not going to make a mistake, I'm being very very careful, nice and gentle, only remove a small amount. And now I'm being extremely careful around the curve part. I have a bit of a guide, but don't forget the belt sander will also remove the stainless steel. Now I've got somewhere near the shape that I want, it's time to use the polishing spindle to initially clean up the part and see roughly what it's going to look like. And in exactly the same way as when I was grinding this part, I pause periodically to dip the part in a tub of water just to cool it. This section of the video is speeded up. I'm sure some viewers are thinking, well why doesn't he wear gloves? Well, I think gloves are dangerous. Gloves can easily catch up in moving machinery and you wouldn't know how bad the injury was until you took the gloves off and your fingers fell on the floor. That's enough of health and safety in this episode. All I need to do now is finish this part on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. The piece of sandpaper is overhanging the bench and I've folded one edge of it down. And that way it makes it much easier to sand the part up to the edge, like the bus that I silver soldered onto the end of it. This job can be very tedious, very boring and takes a long time, but it's worth doing it because you need the reversing lever to look like a casting, and at the moment it looks like a roughly machined piece of brass, but keep watching you'll see what happens. Once again folding the sandpaper over the edge of the bench helps me to make the curved part the correct shape. It takes a while though. As always, this video is heavily edited. This job took about, I would say, 25 minutes to complete. And I'm talking about just the sanding of the part on the wet or dry sandpaper, not making the rest of it. Here I'm checking the dimensions before I move on to the next part of the job. What I have to do now is very, very carefully drill a small hole in the end of the reversing lever. This centre drill is far too big, but it makes the required indentation on the top of the lever. Now I'm drilling a hole down into the lever using a 1 16th of an inch diameter twist drill. Back to the lathe and it's a simple plain turning job to make the handle for the top of the lever. I'm using a parting tool for this because it always cuts square. And as this handle needs to taper, I'm rotating both of the hand wheels at the right amount to move the tool away from the work as it progresses down the work. I find this really easy for two reasons. One is I'm a keyboard player so I've got quite good manual dexterity. And the other reason was my childhood obsession with a toy called an etch sketch You turn two knobs and you got a picture on the screen. Very simple but very clever. The end of the handle is now 1 16th of an inch in diameter and it fits in the hole in the reversing lever perfectly. When I tried the handle in place though it still looked a bit bulbous, so here I'm removing some more metal from it. Also I've pulled the piece of bar further out from the chuck. That way I can use my carbide tipped knife tool to part off the piece of brass. This leaves a sharp pointy end that I then shaped like this. Here's the finished handle. All I need to do now is silver solder the handle onto the main reversing lever. And just for once, I'm not using too much silver solder. After the part was allowed to cool to black and quenched in some water, here I'm cleaning it up on the polishing spindle. At this stage I'm being really careful not to apply too much pressure on the polishing spindle because I don't want to round off every one of the edges. Then it's back onto the wet or dry sandpaper, followed by a bit more polishing spindle, and then... The final polishing will be done with this stuff, this is Brasso Wadding. But unfortunately, this is quite dry Brasso wadding, I need to buy some more. But it still does the trick, and after a while, the reversing lever looks like this. 
So why didn't I use a casting? It would have been easier and probably quicker to use a casting, but I didn't have one, and it was a case of, I know, I'll fabricate it. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.